Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Governor of the Bank of England has issued a stark warning that voting to leave the European Union could damage the British economy and possibly trigger a technical recession, with GDP falling for two consecutive quarters. Only last month, Mark Carney insisted, perhaps somewhat optimistically, that assessing and reporting risks does not mean becoming involved in politics. But tonight, his unprecedented intervention has placed him at the centre of a very political storm. Leave campaigners have accused him of inviting speculators to short the pound, while one Conservative backbencher has called for his immediate resignation. In a moment, the former Chancellor, Lord Lamont, will give his response. But first, Newsnight's Adam Parsons joins me to set the scene. So, Adam, what, what exactly has Mark Carney said to set so many hearts a-fluttering? Well, this revolves around the release of, of two documents today, James. One is the regular inflation report. The other one is the minutes of the Monetary Policy Committee. And if anyone is not an expert on these things, that's fine. These are normally very technical, serious economic uh, documents that, as you said, don't tend to set a heart a flutter. However, what Mr Carney did today was wade first foot deeply forward into the Brexit debate, uh, making some very, very clear uh, points. As you said, pretty much unprecedented. It starts right at the front of this uh, document, saying the most significant risks to the forecast concern the referendum, and it continues to make that point, saying uh, we have financial stability risks around the value of sterling, unemployment, inflation, investment. It is quite a long uh, shopping list. Mr Carney, appearing in this, to try to cover, well, plenty of bases. The most recent weakness reflects in part the forthcoming referendum on the UK's membership of the European Union, which has pushed up uncertainty measures to levels not seen since the Euro crisis. More profoundly, a vote to leave the European Union could have material economic effects on the exchange rate, on demand, and on the economy's supply potential, effects that could affect the appropriate setting of monetary policy. And he went on to say uh, that in the event of a British exit, he thought one of the possibilities was a technical recession. That would be six months of contraction in the economy. Again, that, that's a, a technical expression, but that single word, recession, is bound to cause a very significant uh, political response, I suspect. But especially because of who's, who's uttered it. We, we've heard it seems sometimes from the world and his wife already about what the economic impact might be. And, and the word unprecedented is getting thrown around all the time, but for the Governor of the Bank of England to do this at this time, how, how significant is that? Yeah, really significant. I mean, clearly this debate is framed a lot around economic reports. We've had an absolute blizzard of them recently, but the Bank of England is different. It's our central bank. It is independent of political interest, doesn't have shareholders to worry about. Its specific remit is to analyse the UK economy, and that is what the Governor says he's doing here. He's not being political. He says it would be more political not to release this information. And, and, and it was pretty unrelenting stuff, as you say. Is, is, is the economic side of this debate, then, pretty much done and dusted? Well, we've had a series of reports. I mean, clearly this one is going to get a, a lot of uh, publicity, but we've also had the OECD, we've had the, the IFS, we had the Treasury's own reports and, and plenty of others, all of which have said broadly the same thing. Tomorrow... The International Monetary Fund will wade into this using a reasonably similar model. I'm expecting them, frankly, to say reasonably similar things. And this does raise one question, which is, if the economic argument has been decided, and I'm sure you're going to hear the other side of that as well, is there going to be pressure on the Leave campaign to look for other areas in which to uh, expand its argument? Let's find out. Adam Parsons, many thanks indeed. With me now to give his view of Mr Carney's intervention is Lord Lamont. Uh, former Chancellor of the Exchequer, of course, who, who is currently campaigning for vote leave. Lord Lamont, Mark Carney was, was widely, if not unanimously, regarded as, a, as an astonishing coup for George Osborne when he, when he was appointed. He, he was uh, arguably the most successful central banker in the world at the time. Um, aren't we lucky to have his insights at this well, he came, he came here with a very high reputation uh, indeed, having been a successful governor of the Bank of Canada. 
I think he is in danger of getting too involved in uh, politics. What I'm most um, afraid about is that uh, I think he is in danger of creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. He ought to be very careful with his words because when the governor says things, it has a great effect. Now, there's no reason why there should be a downturn or a recession if Britain votes to leave. There might be a degree of uncertainty, but there's no reason for dramatic contraction to take place. But, well, by the uh, but let me just finish. Uh, For the governor to say this is in danger of actually creating a crisis where a crisis is completely avoidable and completely unnecessary. It would have been far easier and far more, I think, judicious for him simply to have said, we are prepared for all contingencies, all eventualities. To, to be clear, you're not saying his analysis is wrong, you're just saying he should have kept stumped. Well, I think his analysis is there's no guarantee that is right. I think it's quite likely to be wrong. The governor. All, did, all nine they, members they, of the Monetary Policy Committee agree with the, this analysis. The, the Monetary Policy Committee and the uh, governor in August 2013 told the world that when unemployment reached 7%, interest rates would rise. Uh, unemployment is now 5% and interest rates have still not risen. First, Norman Lamont has suspended Britain's membership of the European exchange rate mechanism and the pound is suspended in the European monetary system. Interest rates are immediately cut back from 15% to 12% and the signs now are that devaluation of the pound will almost certainly follow, bringing with it a threat to the future, the political future, of Norman Lamont and even the Prime Minister John Major. Earlier, in a move unprecedented since the First World War, the Chancellor sent interest rates soaring to 15% and homeowners and buyers into a state of shock. The Chancellor added 2% to the rates this morning. Then, after lunch, he announced another 3% rise from tomorrow. All of that until, a few minutes ago, he made this announcement. Today has been an extremely difficult and turbulent day. Massive speculative flows have continued to disrupt the functioning of the exchange rate mechanism. As chairman of the Council of European Finance Ministers, I have called a meeting of the Monetary Committee in Brussels urgently tonight to consider how stability can be restored to the foreign exchange markets. In the meantime, the government has concluded that Britain's best interests are served by suspending our membership of the exchange rate mechanism. As a result, the second of the two interest rate increases that I sanctioned today will not take place tomorrow, and minimum lending rate will be at 12% until conditions become calmer. I will be reporting to Cabinet, discussing the situation with colleagues tomorrow, and may make further statements then. But until then, I have nothing further to say. The Chancellor's decision to suspend the pound in the ERM and call tonight's special meeting of finance ministers in Brussels came after an extraordinary day in the city. The first intervention by the Bank of England as the markets opened had no effect. Sterling continued to slide. By mid-morning it was outside its ERM limit and more intervention by the Bank of England and the Bundesbank failed to have any effect. At 11 o'clock, the Chancellor consulted with the Prime Minister and minutes later, the Bank of England announced a 2% rise in its minimum lending rate. But the pound's fall continued unabated. Then another announcement. Rates would rise by a further 3% to 15% tomorrow. This rise cancelled a few moments ago by the Chancellor. The high street banks had already tracked the Bank of England's first rise, putting their base rates up by two points. The typical small business customer borrows £15,000 from us, that's the average. Uh, it'll cost them about £60 a month more, so it, it, the crucial question is how long will it last? Homeowners are spared any increase for at least another four days. The building societies say they'll not react until after the French referendum on the Maastricht Treaty. We don't know how difficult this is going to be. Sentiment is changing very quickly. It was only two or three days ago that the media were telling us confidently that interest rates were on their way down. We've now had this huge increase today sentiment can change very quickly the other way and we're hoping that it will. Despite the drama of the day, the pound's value against the Deutschmark remains little changed. Some city analysts believe a devaluation is now inevitable. Well, I suspect that what we'd see is not a unilateral devaluation of sterling, but we would see a general Deutschmark realignment uh, where many currencies were adjusting. The pound might get adjusted down, the lira might get adjusted down further and possibly also the Spanish peseta.
There's nothing the markets can do now but wait for the outcome of tonight's EC meeting. Nothing except sell pounds. They're already doing that in New York. Sterling is already five fennigs below its ERM floor. Martin Stanford, Sky News. The you're not, you're not, I need to be clear on this. You're not suggesting that Mark Carney is in any way misleading or trying to deceive the British public. This is, this is a unanimously agreed analysis on, on what Brexit would entail. If you read what the MPC said, it is full of the word could. This might happen. This, this could possibly happen. But Governor Carney afterwards, I think, it was unnecessary to use the word recession. I do not believe anyone can forecast that there will be a recession after, you know, recessions are very rarely foreseen by any forecaster. I can't recall any recession that has been foreseen by forecasters. And really, this was just alarmist. And what I, what I think is happening, alas, and I think it is rather demeaning, is that all these great institutions, the Treasury, the Bank of England, OECD, the IMF, have become highly politicised. There is a close interaction between all of them, the civil servants and all of them interchanging, working together. And, you know, that is a consensus. But I well, think well, it you, is a highly... You use the word politicised to describe economic analysis that doesn't fit with your own position on, on this particular issue. The Bank of England is more independent today than it was when you were Chancellor of the Exchequer, than it has ever been pretty much since its since its inception. So, so to accuse Mark Carney and all nine members of the Monetary Policy Committee to be motivated by anything other than sincerity, truth, objectivity, is a little, well, that no, perhaps I, is I don't, disingenuous. I don't, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I think it was unnecessary to talk, and there is no justification for talking about a recession. Nobody can foresee a recession. There's no reason why it should lead to a recession. Of course there are risks, but there are risks both ways. And you know, just to say that the risks are all one way, I think, is a distortion. Of course, but it is the Bank of England's job to look at these issues, to analyse them effectively, and then, in, in your view, to stay silent. Surely if there was any intent to try and persuade a political narrative to shift in one way or the other, if there were any vested interest on the part of the governor or the MPC, it would be to keep quiet about things in the hope of hoodwinking the yeah, public. But look, if you take something like the exchange rate, in which we were told in rather chilling terms there might be a fall in the ex ex exchange uh, rate. You know, not so long ago we were being told the exchange rate, uh, which actually is at the same level it was when the referendum was announced. We were told it was going to fall through 140. The, the exchange rate is actually no, uh, has been much lower during the lifetime of this government and the uh, previous uh, coalition government. It, it, There's nothing very alarming and they, they can't say for sure what is going to happen to the exchange rate. No, but they can provide guidance and it's not just the exchange rate. House prices will crash, family incomes will tumble, the pound will suffer, inflation will spike, economic growth which is already contracting would would collapse further. I want to be absolutely clear about this, Lord Lamont. Obviously no forecast is infallible. Are you saying that you think the Governor of the Bank of England and all nine members of the Monetary Policy Committee are wrong or somehow biased or something else? I think that the MPC are entitled to highlight potential risks, possibilities, but I think the language that the government used in his press conference afterwards was too certain, too political, too emphatic and too in accordance with the government's view. Lord Lamont, many thanks indeed.